Welcome to ACU Football's National Signing Day show from the JMC Network Studios at Abilene Christian University. I'm Grant Boone with the head football coach at ACU, Adam Dorrell, on the set coach where we shoot your show each week in the fall and today, this high holy day on the college football mm -hmm. fans calendar, we're going to get to learn some new names of guys we're going to be talking about on your show coming up here uh, this fall and in the falls to come. Uh, this is a special day for players. It's a big day for fans. What does National Signing Day mean for a head football coach? Well, I mean, it means a lot, man. It's a culmination of a lot of people's work. Um, you know, you think about all the people that have to help us and where you have official visits between assistant coaches, strength coaches, trainers, the academic support staff, teachers across campus meeting with uh, players for academic visits. And so there's a lot, you know, the casual fan doesn't understand how much work goes into mm. recruiting. And so it's just great to see it all come to fruition and uh, uh, see us add new Wildcats. And, and then really for us, it really transitions us right into spring football. And so, you know, for me, you know, we, we unofficially start when we get back from Christmas, but I think everybody would tell you like, once signing day is over, that next season's really, really here. So, uh, you know, it's exciting, Grant. I feel like we've had a, you know, in year three, had another really good class, really solid. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of our guys' work. Today, for, especially for college football fans, does feel like Christmas. Yeah. Six weeks late, you get to open up some yeah, presents yeah. here. So we get to unwrap some names of some new guys. But before we hear these new names that we're going to see today, maybe give us an emphasis or two that you gave to your staff over this last year as they put together this recruiting plan? Yeah, it was very unique, Grant, because um, th this year we were really uh, broad. I mean, we literally needed basically every position other than a punter and a kicker, and so felt like we were able to go out and address those needs. So it was a very unique year. Uh, some years, you know, you're taking O and D. You usually always take O and D linemen, but maybe you don't take a receiver, or maybe you don't take a running back, or maybe you don't take a quarterback. But this year we were very – uh, large. It was a large class, yeah. and we were able to sign uh, pretty much every position and what we needed. So uh, it made it made it a lot of fun for all the position coaches. A couple of dozen players to meet. Mm -hmm. So let's start right now, beginning with an O lineman from East Texas, Cody Anthony. He's a basketball player as well. He's got some athleticism. It yeah, seems like. yeah. Very excited about uh, Cody. He was a young man that we had been tracking uh, a little bit, and uh, he, you know, he, he's got a unique skill set. He's very long. He's very rangy. Uh, we went over and watched him play basketball. I was immediately really impressed with him and really sold after after watching him play basketball. Uh, rangy and as many minutes as he played in that basketball game for weighing 255 pounds right now. Uh, just super impressed, unselfish kid. Mm. Uh, great family, comes from a great family and, and he's a very, very high character, high academic guy and, and we're going to start him off at tackle and just feel like uh, he's got a, a chance to be great. He's been a multi-year team captain mm -hmm. in high school football program. That means something. Does it does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. And so just he really fits here at ACU, and, and, and I think he really felt that when he came. ACU fans will remember North Lamar High School. That's the alma mater of the all-time touchdown leader at ACU. Billy Malone went there to North Lamar. Speaking of quarterbacks, here's a guy that played, was kind of a dual threat guy, Justin Clark, mm -hmm. uh, a kid that you're going to use, I think, as a wide receiver yes. from – from uh, Dallas, and what do you envision from this Prosper High School grad? Yeah, he's from Prosper, a very good high school football program. Uh, Justine played on a, a team, a lot, of, a lot of kids are going out of here today signing a letter of intent, so he played on a really, really good team. The thing that sticks out to me, he's got really good ball skills after the catch mm. for a kid that long. Sometimes you, you see that more in your slot receivers, okay. but he really exhibits good ball skills after the catch. He's got a really good catch radius. Uh, again, very high, uh, uh, high football IQ. Love his family background. Both his mom and dad are retired uh, Army vets. Mm. And just there's a lot of structure, a lot of discipline there. And, you know, he's got to get in here and, and bulk up and get into the weight room. But certainly feel like he has a chance to uh, help us potentially next year because his, he's just got such a good skill set already. Your offensive coordinator, Josh Lambertson, uh, is not afraid to run the direct snap, the Wildcat, and he ran that a lot, didn't he? There, yeah, he there did. At Prosper. Mm -hmm. All right, staying on the offensive side of the ball, you get a rangy wide receiver from Mesquite High School, also a jumper and a relay man in track and yeah. field. Tell us about Devin Davis. Yeah, again, just the thing that really stood out to me, you start getting a lot of receivers on the board. A lot of times, Grant, they run together. And the thing with both of those kids, I was super impressed when we went and did our home visits with them. And, you know, that's just as much an interview for us as it is them. And yes. Super impressed with him and what they did. Uh, he and his fellow seniors, you know, they won one game as juniors. Mm. And he was a team captain on that team. And just I'll, I'll never forget when I, 
you know, basically asked him a loaded question and, and just his response on how he took ownership and what they started doing as captains going into their senior year, uh, that that was on them. Uh, you know, what, their accountability club and how they woke each other up. I just thought it was for a guy who's 17 years old just to understand football in depth like that uh, from a culture standpoint, I just was blown away, really blown away. And he is uh, a good looking young man already. He's very developed. Mm. Uh, he's, you know, we could run him out there right now and he looks like a junior. And again, he's got, he can high point a football. Uh, he can do that very good at blocking on the perimeter, but without question, he's an outside receiver and he'll have a chance to help us next year. All right, staying in the Metroplex, you get a major talent at linebacker from Lake Dallas High School's Daryl Minor mm. Jr. Yeah, I came into Daryl a little bit late in the recruiting process. Uh, Daryl can run really well. He's a micro wheel. He's definitely an inside the box guy. I uh, love his physicality. He's got good ball skills as far as when he's getting in and popping the ball, trying to get the ball loose. But uh, again, what we really look for is in a high school linebacker is, man, do they, uh, do they close to contact? Are they physical when they get there? It's one thing to watch a guy running around blocks. And you see a lot of that. On high, you want to see a guy running through blocks. And, man, he, he certainly epitomizes that. And then just for what you have to do in the Southland Conference, your linebackers have to be able to cover. Mm. Uh, and he certainly does that. His dad played at Oregon State, yep. spent a little time in the, in the NFL, NFL yep. and uh, was a fine running back. Mm -hmm. And uh, his son plays on the other side of the ball. Right, some from 40 High School just east of Dallas, you get a defensive end, Will Morgan. He played some tight end in high school. Yeah. Baseball player as well, you see him on the defensive side? We do. You know, that, that's just a philosophy of mine. It, anytime we get into a uh, internal recruiting battle on is he going to play offense or defense, <laughs> whether it's a tight end slash D lineman or a receiver corner, we, we usually go to the defensive side of the football. And we just feel like Will, a couple things I really like about him, you know, from a great family, his dad's uh, a high school football coach. Uh, Will's been very competitive throughout his career. Uh, he's, uh, you know, a high 20s ACT type kid. Mm -hmm. Really is going to fit here. He's longer than he is taller. And so he, he's got a, a chance to just get really big through the shoulders and a good football IQ, plays hard, team. I mean, there's just so many things. You Your go, kind of guy. Check, check. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to fit in great here. <laughs> All right, back to East Texas. You get another young man yeah. who played on both sides. You have him slotted, I think, as a linebacker yeah. from Paris High yeah. School, James Neal. Yeah, James, uh, uh, very excited about James. Uh, uh, you got to understand his background. He had spent the previous three years basically spending the majority of his time playing running back. Mm. And so you watch his film, and it's really good. But then you watch his film and know that he's only done that for one year. Uh, at 189 pounds, his physicality, uh, his ability to reroute slot receivers. We're going to put him out at Sam with Quayshon. Mm. Uh, he, he Another just, guy who went from offense yeah, to defense. Yeah, exactly. And he has that skill set. But, you know, for a guy like him, obviously we've got to get all these young men bigger, faster, stronger. But for a guy at 189 pounds, just the physicality and the pop that he exhibits, I was – and he can run, okay. you know, and so we I'm very, very excited about him. He he's a kid. Again, we kind of came into a little bit later in the process, but immediately hit it off with him. And I just I'm super excited uh, that he's going to be a Wildcat. We met Devin Davis earlier uh, from Mesquite High. One of his high school teammates yeah. is going to be a, a college teammate with him. Defensive end Osaratan Obadiah. Yeah. You got to get a nickname yeah, for this got, guy, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Ob 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 I'm still okay. working on that. He and I are still we're, we're still talking about that. But he'll call you coach. Uh, yeah, call. yeah. Uh, again, he got in there, uh, got, got going immediately with him. Coach Drabil Mario recruited him. Uh, again, I'll never forget it on his home visit. I just loved his spirit and his mm. passion and. Uh, he's got a really warm smile, and he's, he's one of those guys that always seems uh, to be very positive in every situation. And, again, talking to him about their junior year to senior year, uh, Grant, you look at him, and he's just uh, – he, he epitomizes of what we have to do here at ACU on the O&D lines. We have to find young men uh, that are high-character kids, good students, and they have frames. And he, his frame right now, you look at him, and I think we got him at 225, 230 when he was here. But just the, the, the girth in his shoulders and the, his length, um, he, he's going to be a really, really good player. He, he wants to be great. He continually works hard to hone his craft. I mean, he, he's a football junkie. And so um, we're going to get him in here immediately, start putting weight on him and see if he can potentially help us next year. No energy vampires allowed. No, right? no. That's why you love no. a guy like that, don't I do, you? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Brings a lot to the locker room. 
Well, we've had some terrific players through the years from Smithson Valley High School yeah. north of San Antonio, including your current starting linebacker, mm -hmm. Jack Gibbons. You land another Smithson Valley Ranger in tight end Logan Smith. Yeah, Logan, excited about Logan, and, and you have to understand Logan's uh, story a little bit. He is, uh, he's been playing left tackle for them uh, for the last few years. Uh, he was a hard projection for us at tight end. We told him that. Uh, we encouraged him to go out over Christmas break and take a quarterback and go run routes. Mm. And I'll, I'll never forget, I'm home at Christmas break and I got family over and my wife's like, what are you doing? I'm, you know, but I'm like, I gotta watch this film. And I just about fell off my chair watching the kid run routes. Wow. I mean, he was just natural. He caught the ball really naturally. And, but again, it speaks to him, his family, his dad's uh, a military, uh, the great family, but the kid's so unselfish to play left tackle yeah. You know, never never said anything about it. He did what was best for their football that. team. And and so we're glad that he's going to be rewarded to be able to go on and play college football. Uh, he is a big joker. He's going to get <laughs> ginormous. A lot of similarities, Cody Ennis, as far okay. as that frame and, and just excited uh, about him. And we saw what a tight end in Coach Lamberson's offense can do Absolutely. last year. Cody literally doubled his catches and yards yeah from his first three years yeah, at absolutely. ACU. Uh, and Cody was a huge part of your big turnaround last mm -hmm. year. Speaking of tight ends, this one from Lumberton, just north yeah. of Beaumont. Give us the scoop on Gabe Sonnier. You, big, uh, you're gonna look at the guy and, and everybody uh, thinks he's an O-lineman. And a lot of other people were recruiting him at, at O-line and I just said, you're not an O-lineman. And he's, mm. he's not because he has great ball skills. The way he adjusts to the ball in the air, uh, they do so much in high school with RPOs on the line of scrimmage. Coach Lamerson does a ton of those. We're running zone ride, stretch inside zone. You sneak the tight end out the back. And I mean, his catch radius is phenomenal. Uh, here's what I love about him. Um, he did football, he did track, he played basketball. So you know he's only gonna get stronger. Mm. His brother is uh, one of the top MMA fighters uh, in the United States. So you know the guy knows how to spar a little bit. And, and he and I talked about how many fights he won he wins with brother and he said it's not very many <laughs> uh but so he's just got that he's just a little ornery you know uh -huh. and he, he, in he's, a good way right? yes <laughs> oh absolutely and, and you want those guys like that to be able to play on the line of scrimmage but man he is just a a, a good kid and we're excited about him because i just feel like since he he's not topped out you know he didn't just focus on football he's gone three sports and we just feel like he's going to get really big and really strong and, and, and have a good career if it comes down to an octagon, we, we know who <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're going to Gabe. We All right, so is going to open the 2020 season. Th this was, uh, some fans may have not seen this news, but in the last couple of months, the game against Texas A&M was switched from November to, to the season opener in yeah. 2020. That means it's a, a chance for a homecoming from College Station High School's Ryan Staff, a yeah. corner. Tell us about yeah, Ryan. Yeah, uh, excited about Ryan. His dad's a high school football coach, good family, good, just really good people. Ryan's, again, a great student. Uh, gets a bunch of academic money like a lot of these kids do. But he, here's the thing about Ryan, uh, his, his height, you look at him, he's not maybe the tallest guy, but he's got a good wingspan. Mm. And then Grant, you know, it's like I've always said, it's like, what are the intangibles? Mm -hmm. The kid has one of the, fa he's got one of the top 20 uh, fastest 60 times in the United States right now in indoor track. And I mean, you just, it is what it is. The kid can run, you wow. know, and it's uh, that's something you, when they get to this level, you can get them quicker. Uh, laterally and you can get them stronger but you're not uh, that that top end speed he's got the top end speed there's no question in my mind that he's going to be a really good corner here he's got good fluid hips uh, and he's just a very competitive kid you've mentioned a couple of o-linemen whom you're going to use as a tight end you do get an o-lineman here from navarro high school down in seguin sounds like an old west sheriff wyatt tate <laughs> tell us about why good, good, uh, great kid excited about him played in a wing t type oh, of offense nice uh, he spends his entire, you watch, you watch clip one or clip 100, it's the same. Uh, he's in a four point stance, literally. Love and it. he's either cool. base blocking left or he's blocking down. I never saw the kid pass pro. But then you, you, again, you meet him, you look at him, he's got really good hip bend, plays basketball. We could see him move on the basketball floor. Uh, he's, he's fluid, he's not a slug. And so you, at our level and who we are right now, we have to project some of those kids. But again, you can't project six, six and a half, and his, his wingspan was just un unworldly. So, I mean, it's going to put him at tackle and that length and being able to punch. And uh, again, good student, too. So excited about him. 
So there's your group that you're announcing today. Yeah. And, and coach, this would really be a good time, I think, to remind everyone that these signings are the culmination of several weeks and months and even years that your staff yeah. has put in to establish relationships with these young men. They don't get a lot of credit, your assistant coaches, no. but they've put in a lot of hours and a lot of miles. Haven't they? they do, and, and what, again, what people, any chance I get, I try to explain the recruiting process a little bit. You know, for us and for me, and I always, has, always have been as a head football coach, uh, I try to be about culture first. And so we try to really dive in to people's backgrounds and look at that stuff. I think we do that more than other schools, you know. Are we perfect? No, yeah. but we, we try to be really perfect and on the type of kid mm. we're bringing to campus. Uh, so that takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, the paperwork that we use uh, involves them going in and talking to the high school football coach, but then they have to find two other sources of reference that aren't coaching related, and that's very difficult. And it takes work. And so what may, maybe a guy goes in and should only take him a half hour in high school, it turns into a couple hours because we're trying to do research. So uh, I'm very proud of our guys. Uh, it's, it's a very time consuming process. Uh, we go really high and, and we're shooting for really high for recruits. And so we're battling, you know, those uh, mid tier FBS type schools and, uh, the, you know, the non power five FBS schools and, you know, the guy knows at the end of the day what's probably going to happen there. We're probably not going to get that yeah. guy, but our guys never shy away from competition and recruiting. They get in there and they battle for those kids. They work their tails off and, you know, and, and they don't complain when we do lose one of those kids. But, you know, I'm just very proud of them. I think if you look in the short time we've been here, we have definitely made a lot of headway uh, in, in recruiting good quality student athletes. And, and we just feel like we're, we're getting better all the time. All right, we're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll get to know a little bit better the players that Coach Doral and his staff signed in the early signing period. This is ACU Football's National Signing Day Show. This is the first year of the new early signing mm -hmm. period it happened back in December. We've come to know the names of another dozen new Wildcats to go along with the ones that we just mentioned. But this is really our first chance to get the, uh, to know them a little bit better. So let's begin with a running back who gave Longview High fans a, yeah. an early Christmas present. He scored a late touchdown in the 6A state title game. It gave the Lobos their first state championship in 81 years. That happened just a couple of days after he signed with you. See what happens when you sign with yep. Adam Doral and yeah. ACU? Good things happen. <laughs> Good things happen. Uh, here comes Jesse Anderson. Yeah. Oh, that. man. He's uh, he's just a hammer, Grant. Um, I, I'll never forget my first conversation when I got on the phone with him. I was so excited after watching his film. You know, and Coach Curley and, and Coach Walsh had been recruiting him, and, you know, I would watched him and as it progressed. But it got to the point where he was spending as much time uh, playing fullback, or catching a pass out of the backfield or being a blitz pickup guy. And I mean, his physicality is just, it's legendary. And I'm so excited to coach this kid. There's no doubt in my mind he can help us next year. I know we have good running backs, but there, there's a place for that. I mean, when you're as physical as he is blocking or when he has the ball in his hand or when he catches it out of the backfield, it's just, it's a really unique skill set we feel. Uh, very blessed to have him here and excited for him and, and his future. Well, uh, what a what a memory for Absolutely. him. Absolutely. And, and that Longview High School team. From the JUCO ranks, you bring in a tight end from Fort Wayne, mm -hmm. Indiana by way of Arizona Western Community College. Tell us about Paxton Bergdahl. Yeah, Paxton started his career at the University of Ohio and then, and then transferred to the junior college. Uh, again, he's a very, very good student, uh, big, tall kid. He's going to really help our quarterbacks out in the pass game. Uh, he, he spent a lot of time at the JC on the line of scrimmage and blocking. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we've got some work to do there, sure. but I mean, he's a kid. He, we feel like he's not a one-trick pony. He can run, block, or pass, catch. 
big, tall frame, and you know, hopefully we should get a lot of mileage on special teams out of him as well. In, in this early signing period, you got three FBS transfers, including an offensive lineman from Huntsville, Alabama. He played in his home state at a Troy program that really is on the rise. Yeah. They, they've had a terrific couple of years. Tell us about Zach Branner. Well, Z Zach's interesting because he graduated. He's got one year left. He's a grad transfer. Uh, it, it was a very unique thing. Um, we had reached out to him. Uh, his uh, fiance, uh, his grandparents went to Abilene Christian University. So it, you know how ACU people are, made a little tie there. That worked. And that did, that really helped us out. It really did, at least got him interested mm. in us a little bit. We're able to talk to him. He's played a lot of quality snaps. Uh, for a football program that won a bowl game. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think he was playing around 30, 35 snaps a game, splitting time between tackle and guard. Uh, he can help us from the football end, but I can tell you, he can help us culturally in the locker room. He knows how to win. Uh, he knows what winning looks like. Troy is a very, very good football program. Yeah. Uh, Coach Brown did a really, really yeah, good did. job there and their work ethic and they're guys that do uh, more with less. And I feel like we need to be able to do that here. And so. Uh, he can help us physically, but I really think he can help us the, the cultural component in the locker room as well. Another JUCO transfer, this one from Blinn College, originally from Dulles High School in Houston. Tell us about D-tackle Michael Gaden. Yeah, Michael's very, uh, a very unique young man. Uh, it's been really good, great to get to know him. Uh, you know, Mike's had some tragedy in his life, and it's been really cool to see him persevere and overcome. Very good student. Mm. Uh, he, you know, from a height-wise, he's a little undersized, but... He's got good length. He's got really, really good get off, high football IQ, great smile. Once you get to know him, you'll, you'll see him coming down the road. And I uh, just feel like he's going to fit here with, the, with our defense uh, and just really in, loves the game of football and just, I think, really loves the process. That's the thing we, we liked about him. He just he likes weights, he likes going to class. And so it was a really complete deal. And, Excited for Mike. Somebody's got to replace not just the, the tackles, yeah, but Gator. the smile of Gator, Dante <laughs> Hibbert. You, you lost at the graduation. You get another tight end prospect, this one from Jackson, Nebraska. Played for the Cornhuskers. And you know his high school Bishop yeah. Heelan from your days at yep. Northwest Missouri State, Brandon Hohenstein. Yeah, it's a, he, can, he comes from a great family. Uh, he comes from a great high school football program that's uh, produced a lot of Division I football players throughout the Midwest. I actually knew who Brandon was coming out of high school. Mm. Uh, he spent his time playing defensive end, outside linebacker, and wide receiver. And so I went to the University of Nebraska. He was uh, all Big Ten, academic, all Big yep. Ten. Uh, just hadn't played a bunch. And he just said, you know, I want to spend my last two years playing. Really good in the pass game. Really, really good. Whether he's on the line or flexed out, he's going to be a matchup problem for linebackers. And uh, we're going to get him going on that immediately. But the thing we have really saw, too, is he doesn't shy away from blocking. Um, again, just a high, high academic guy, business major here, and he's planning on trying to get that done and, and, and working on his master's degree before he's done. All right, this is from the if you can't beat him, join him file. You get a talented defensive end from Angelo State. He played against your team yeah, last September yeah. at, at Anthony Field at Wildcat Stadium. Went on to earn first team all Lone Star Conference honors, Bright Iaguaro. Yeah, it works. I've known who Bright is for a while. Obviously, I, I had a relationship with Coach Wagner there. and. You know, Bright got done, and he had the same thing. Grad transfer had one year left, and just said that you know he wanted to try to go, go a little bit higher yeah. and, and see if he could play at this level. No doubt in my mind, he can. Uh, he's in grad school right now. He's been a real pleasure to have. He's been great for our guys. He is already here. Yeah. Yes, he, Grant him in the weight room right now. I mean, he's just crushing it over there, and so he brings that level of competition into the I weight. Like it. He's very serious when he walks into the weight room, and so I love that. We love that as coaches, and you know, we, we think he can really help us here. Another D lineman comes your way from Brandon, Mississippi, and Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, a terrific junior college program. Tell us about LaKendrick Jones. Yeah, LaKendrick, uh, really good player. Uh, he's, he's been able to play the inside, whether it's a three technique, in some of their 30 stuff, playing a four eye on the tackle or actually getting in a jet technique and rushing outside. Plays with his hands really well, has really good leverage. And just a thing that just really popped up to me. Sometimes with junior college kids, if the play's not coming to them, you don't always see him play hard. Interesting. He plays really, really hard. And that's what really, out of all those kids we watched, he just, lo you could really tell he loved to Jumped play the game. Football. Yes. Okay. He was tracking the football backside, mm. and, you know, that was never an issue with him and, and uh, we're excited about that. We talk a lot about that terrific junior college conference, the Jayhawk League up in Kansas. That's where you found Alex Lofton mm -hmm. at Butler Community College. You bring in one of their teammates. Uh, he's a linebacker. 
maybe a, a, a touch under six feet, Hunter Keir. Yeah, yeah. Hunter, Hunter's a guy who played high school football in Kansas, uh, played for Tim Schaffner there. Tim runs a great program. Uh, they do a phenomenal job. And to, I, I just say it like this, if you are a Kansas kid and you start for Butler, you're, you're a good player because mm. they, they bring so many kids from, from out of state. Way. Yeah, and so uh, he's been really, really business major, really good student, great family, and he always makes plays. And so, you know, for me, Grant, I don't – we always get into the, yeah, you would like to, some, uh, the student athlete to be, you know, this long and this high, <laughs> you know. But, but at the end of the day, if, if, if they're making plays on film and it's just – consistent it's like week one week two week three week four and you start looking at reasons why you shouldn't take the guy and you can't really find him and to me that says something about him and who he is he's just really hard-nosed and like I just he's like a little honey badger man he always seems <laughs> he always seems to get around the ball Zach Thomas made a, a lot of money mm -hmm. and played a lot of years yes, in the NFL after a whole bunch of people said, said he couldn't make yep. it at first at Texas Tech yeah. then then with the Dolphins yeah. and elsewhere you lost a couple of senior wide receivers in DJ Fuller and Kalen Sadler that ought to create some opportunities for someone from outside, someone new to step in. You think one of those guys could be a kid from Allen High School and a transfer from Liberty University, Lionel or LJ J McConnell? Yeah. yeah, LJ, everybody calls him LJ. Uh, played at a very prestigious high school football program, played in some state championship games. Yeah. Went to Liberty, you know, with their transition through coaching. He just yep. said, you know, it's time to... Dinged time, up a little yeah, bit too, Yeah, dinged wasn't up, didn't, wasn't playing a lot, but through injuries, but... You know, I, I know our guys have been here, and he's been out working with Luke and our quarterback, Samaje, already. And I know within the first couple of days, they stopped in and said, <laughs> Good we, call. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to be fine. We'll take you know, him. Yeah, we'll take yeah. him. So, That's great. Uh, yeah, he's, it is. he's back close to home. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Yeah. He's, it's here for – he's able to, for his family to get over to see him and play. And, you know, that was very important to him. Uh, back to the offensive line. Tell us about the transfer from Snow College up in Utah, Tanner Parker. Yeah, Tanner, very unique. Uh, Tanner's – uh, older, mature guy. He's been on his, uh, I believe it was uh, Tonga. He was on his mission there for two, two or two and a half mm -hmm. years. And so he comes back. He has three years of eligibility left. He's got unbelievable okay, feet. Three, yeah. uh, unbelievable feet. I mean, he's got feet like a ballerina. He's a left <laughs> tackle. Now we got to get him stronger. We, we, we've talked to him about diet and nutrition, and we, it's been really extensive here since he's been here, uh, you know, in mid January. But once we can get his weight down and get his strength back up, he just, when you're on that mission, he just, you know, there's not a lot of opportunity for him to sure. work out. And so, again, very, very high family. My mom and dad are business owners. He's a business major. I uh, just feel really good about him as being a complete student athlete and being able to help us. You have two more years with Luke Anthony, and yeah. his body of work in, in, in you know, a year plus uh, is, is really solid. But is there ever a time you're not looking at a quarterback you always have to be on the lookout you got one that you really like from down in marble yeah. falls central texas six five two hundred pounds tell us about andrew Stripling. yeah a andrew it's a very unique situation uh most coach or any coach uh, it really doesn't matter the sport will probably tell you that in their career about a hundred percent of the time <laughs> when somebody shows up at your door unexpected it's like that oh boy here we go there's a reason yeah he showed up uh, his dad showed up a couple years ago mm. and uh, came in and, and introduced himself and and said, you know, I've got this gun when you look at him. And, you know, he left and, and Coach Lamberson and I jokingly laughed, you know, and and uh, you've been through this. You've been through it a lot. You know, it usually goes the other way. And we put the film on and you're like, hey, that kid's pretty good. And, you know, this would have been uh, going into his junior year. And so he had good sophomore tape, good junior tape, uh, team captain as a junior. Uh, both, by the way, I, he was a high 20 ACT kid his junior year in high school. And so, again, you start research. He's the guy you would have recruited even anyway, if he wasn't exactly, football, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so, again, here's what I love about him, Grant. He's not just a football guy. He's done track. He's doing basketball. He's a really good basketball player. Yeah. Uh, Coach Lamberson went and watched him and just said, for as big as he is, the way he moves, it's unbelievable because he's a big kid, man. He, and your just natural inclination is to label him as a pocket passer. Uh, he can do that, but man, he can move too. And so uh, just really excited, great family. And so it's, it was a good story. Him, him, me and his dad laughed about that. I, I told his dad about that when he was up for his recruiting visit. So uh, it, it, you're, it's a, a, a wealth uh, really that you have at quarterback position because you have Luke obviously yeah. two more years. Samaj yes. really played had some Absolutely. big games for you. Now you get in 
a guy like Andrew Stripling. So last but certainly not least, big O lineman from Junction City, Kansas, 6'6", 300 pounder. Tell us about Zach Terry. He's an impressive athlete, but an impressive kid too. Yeah, he is. Uh, again, he's very mature for his age, uh, military family. Uh, he can play center or left tackle. We're going to start him off at center. Uh, he's gotten better each and every year. But I mean, just, you know, he's uh, he, he's been through uh, EMT school. He's done that on the weekends and he's just stuff like that really stood maturity. out to us about his maturity and his ability to be able to come down here and and ha handle the academic rigors that we have at ACU and and to be able to, uh, you know, get in here and help us. And, and we just felt like, man, whether we went center whether we went tackle, it was really a no-brainer. He's got a lot of length. Got to get him stronger, put a little weight on. But, man, just there's a, there's just a big upside there. Well, that's the group. Uh, it's an impressive-sounding yeah. bunch, and I know you've enjoyed getting to know their Absolutely. families. I was talking to Josh Lamberson a, a few days ago, and, and, and I said, can you put into words, can you describe the difference that you feel from this third spring ball that you're about to embark upon from the second and the first he said it's almost impossible to describe yeah. how much momentum we have yeah. it, 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 it's a good feeling it's a great feel. it's a great, feel. it's a great feeling here. Grant. i tell you for me what was so fun is to just reflect back before we started having these on-campus visits and to think about like how far how, how far we've grown as a program and to be able to actually put some slides up on the board that talked about you know winning in football you know and, and that was finally great you know whether it was beating nickel state first mm -hmm. first time we've beaten a top 25 opponent the best record we've had since going division one you know the most wins and, and, and that's really cool but what's cool to me to see is we have progressed every year in our gpa you know our first semester as a coaching staff 275 uh, 295 296 and i think we were 298 and we're going to get that 30 I'm very proud of that. I mean, that's not Big. easy to do oh, at ACU. And I, I can say this because I went to a state school. This isn't a state school, you know. It's good academics here, and kids have to work at it. And, you know, the fact that they are buying into that and doing it, our community service hours continue to rise. And I don't I, – I mandate that they have to do one event a year. It's a spring cleanup. But after that, we, you know, suggest it. But it's – man, our guys are going out and getting involved. And so, so for me – the fact that guys are doing, uh, our coaching staff's doing what we said we were going to do when we got here. It's really fun. Yeah. And it's really, really cool. And it's really, um, it's really energetic to me, man. It's a shot in the arm right now. It's just like we, we say every day in the building, value growth. And it's like, I know everybody wants to win a national championship. I get that. Yeah. But like, you have to value growth along the way. If you cannot do that, um, it, it just becomes polarizing at times and in, and in society of instant gratification, yeah. football does not work like that. And so, you know, Great we try point. to talk to people about that a lot and talk to our players and, you know, have fun in life, value growth and, and move the needle every day. And if everybody's doing that, man, we're, we're going we're gonna to be okay. And as you say, we don't always get it right every single no. time, but, but there is something you're aspiring to within yeah. this program that is a little different, isn't it? Absolutely there is. And, you know, I've, I've, I've made no bones about it, what my vision was when I came here. It was not to be, you know, average, you know, and I told Dr. Schubert that and I told everybody else that. And I, we're trending, you know, in that direction. And so to be able to see that stuff on the rise and uh, what's been really cool for me is to see whether it's a booster alum, a faculty member, you know, acknowledging that we're getting better in those mm. areas, man. Like, that's why I always encourage, whether it's booster fat, like, it, tell the kids that, man. Tell them, like, hey, I'm proud of you. You're getting better. That stuff's powerful, man. And, and I think sometimes people think that the only way athletes and coaches get uh, gratification is from a scoreboard, and that's not true. That's not true at all, man. If, if, if people know that the body of work's getting better mm. and people can take that home each and every day and hang their hat on it, man, that's, it's good stuff, and it feels really good. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate Another it. National Signing Day is in the books, and you can get all of the scoop on all of these players on acusports.com. For Coach Adam Doral, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching ACU Football's National Signing Day show, and go Wildcats.